Hello, Tim Wilmots here, and welcome to my watercolour demonstration. The subject of my demo is a little village called Wickwall, near to where I live, and I think it would make a very good watercolour subject with lots of light and dark. We've got the reflections, uh, lots of strong light hitting those windscreens there, dark buildings behind. We'll get a, a couple of figures in there as well. Um, a, a good watercolour subject. So as I normally do, start off with the outline sketch. Now today I'm using Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. It's 300 grams in weight, rough texture. And it's secured down with some masking tape on some lightweight Corex board, C-O-R-E-X, Corex board, which is quite lightweight. So I find with masking tape, get the cheapest you can find because if you use any strong heavy duty uh, masking tape, that can actually damage the paper as you, as you take it off at the end of the picture, at the end of the painting. So I'm doing the left hand buildings, the rooftops and not too, not too much detail. quite a loose approach and notice as I'm drawing my pencil very rarely leaves the paper it's just almost one continuous line and we're doing the clock tower here And the pointy top. And then the right hand rooftops. Trying to think about perspective here. And I'm constantly referring back to the source photograph. Just checking things as I'm going along. Now I'm defining the left hand rooftops thinking about where the dividing lines will be there's going to be a few little shadows in there where one building finishes and the other one starts and again thinking about perspective as I go down towards the the background Now we've got those car tops and they're really when you're drawing a row of cars it's just lots of shapes ups and downs little gaps between them and the gaps get closer get tighter as you go towards the background so this foreground car i've decided to leave this in the picture I think with the the sun hitting it it sort of uh, adds to the composition and now thinking about again perspective and that windscreen coming down to the bonnet A few background cars here. The second car in. Obviously just a little bit smaller than the first car I did. And then a third car this one's actually facing us. I find they're going to be a lot easier to do when they're facing you. The cars are easier to draw and paint when you're looking at the front of them or the back of them rather than a, a side a side elevation. 
more things to think about when you're drawing a car sideways on. So a bit of background detail down towards the end of the street, base of the clock tower meeting that and now the base of the right hand buildings again like the car tops just just really a jagged edge jagged bottom where the door entrances are a few door entrances now I'm just drawing a few reference lines trying to get them parallel here this is where the the right hand windows will be and again where different buildings end and start but just a few vertical lines there trying to make them parallel to the right hand edge a few windows random windows Not too careful not to draw them all in. Just a few, just to give a, a hint that it is a building. And some of these windows will be dark, some will be light, catching the sunlight. A few minute details on the background cars there. Now some figures, first figure, careful not to get it dead centre, just slightly off the central area. Just a basic indication of the legs and the, where the shadow is going to be. So the light's coming towards us here. And the second figure, again, just maybe joining those shadows. Now I'm just roughly indicating here where the shadows are going to be. I don't always do this, but just to doubly make sure. I don't I don't go over the the areas that I want to to retain as light um, as highlights uh, when I when I do my wash I'm trying to just doubly make sure it's clear to me where the darkest area is going to be a few more details on the chimneys chimney tops bit more of a definition try and resist the temptation not to add too much detail there at the back or the front So we're almost done with the preliminary outline sketch there. I'm using a 3B pencil, by the way. So quite a, a hard, a hard pencil. Gives nice dark lines, which will show through the wash. Now, the sky. I'm just going in with some plain water there. I'm using a fairly large mop brush with natural hairs. I use mainly a Skoda brushes. I find they're, they're very good quality and not too expensive either. So now I'm going to get, do a bit of sky, cerulean blue here. A 
In fact, mixing a few few blues there, not just entirely cerulean. And almost with the side of the brush, just dragging it down on top of the paper. I've got a slight slope here with this paper today. Not not too much of an angle because of where the camera is right right above. It's probably only probably only about 10 degrees, 15 degrees slope here. So the paint just travels down just a little bit and it's merging in with the, the clear water that we did before. Just giving a, a fairly random cloud type effect. So I'm now gonna mix up a bit of darker mix for the clouds, ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna, again with the side of the brush, just dragging in random areas in the gaps there. This will dry a lot lighter. And then down, down towards the rooftops, it will get a little bit lighter. Bit of yellow ochre there at the base. So not too careful with following the outline of the rooftops there. I'm mixing up a bit of warmer colour with the rooftops, sort of a reddy brown there. Again, not worrying about things bleeding into each other. We're gradually coming down the page here. I have to excuse the slight sheen or the shine on the, the paper there because of the camera angle, sometimes difficult to position it right with my lighting. Right, we're coming down into the buildings now, building walls, and we're going a bit cooler. Sounding in a bit of cobalt. And sometimes when I'm mixing these colors, you'll, you'll see a sort of coolish in the middle, on the right-hand side in the middle, a sort of coolish uh, mixture going on and then bottom right sort of warmer colour. I sometimes try and and stick to that sort of cool in one and warm in the other but you'll find as I go through I lose the plot and it oh, it all gets mixed in with each other. Right base of the buildings now. This is just the initial wash trying to get rid of the white paper. A lot darker as we come down to the base there. A bit more burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. They're a, a classic couple, those two, to get, to get your darks. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, Maybe something else like alloys and crimson or some dark red. And if you really want to go darker still, I use neutral tint, which I'll be using very shortly. So base of the buildings. Now An initial wash here for the shadow of that foreground car. So I'm still using that same brush. Second car. 
And notice each time each time I'm going back to the palette, I'm picking up different colors, mixing them around, not st sticking to the same colors, the same hues. Now, the pavement, face the buildings, color in those figures. Down a bit more now. Leave out little highlights on the pavement here and there, just where the light is catching it. A bit warmer towards the foreground, a bit more red. Join up with the initial car shadow there. And that third car that's facing us. So as you can see, I'm constantly going back in while the paper is still quite moist here. I'm still going in, adding a bit more color, more blues, a bit more burnt sienna. Add a bit of definition to the bonnet there where there's a little line going down to the front. Just mopping up some of that excess paint that's dripped down there. I don't want that inadvertently dripping down, so I've just taken some excess paint off my brush and just sucked it up. I actually have a, a sponge over to the right hand side that you can't see in this shot. I'm constantly um, dropping my brush into just to, to take off any excess moisture there or any unwanted pigment. I'm constantly using that. Just any old sponge will do. So at this stage I'm just thinking about that first wash here. Going in again. We're nearly done on this first stage. And uh, to speed up the process, I would get out the hairdryer here. Speed up the drying process. There we are. I've just fast forwarded now. So I've just used the hairdryer, make sure everything is really, really dry before the next stage, which will be adding in more darks. So a slightly different brush here, a smaller, smaller brush, synthetic, give me a bit more of a point. I'm going in with some really darker colors now. A bit of red in there. Burnt Sienna. So first chimney, and notice I hold the brush sort of not 
too close to the point. I'm holding it almost at the the far end, and that will I find that helps me get that looser approach. So the actual side of the chimney, and then the shadow of the chimney on the rooftop. And the second chimney. These chimneys are going to get a bit more random towards the middle as we're going further back. Let's add in the first shadow there. First shadow where one roof, where one house ends and another one starts. With more of a point, adding in some more lines there, quite faint towards the back. Right now for the building walls and we'll define where the windows go so I can just about see where I did those random window openings. Again thinking of perspective getting a little bit smaller as I go back back to the Back to the background there. And it's not one straight long line, it's lots of jagged edges where it sort of blurs towards the, the back. Quite a bit darker now as I'm coming down to the base of those buildings. Again, adding in a bit more pigment. Getting a bit darker towards the base of those buildings. So right at the top there, adding a bit of neutral tint and ultramarine blue, that's going to go quite dark. And this is probably that left hand side there is going to be one of the darkest areas just above the foreground car. So I've gone quite dark there to, to maximise the difference in contrast between the two. So just continuing along the tops of the background cars parked on the other side of the road. Going back into that slightly 
less dark color there in that middle mixing area. Just some very loose windscreen details of those background cars. Not too precise. Doesn't matter if the if there's a bit of bleeding going on with the the building walls. We're getting quite another dark mix now. for the gutters and those walls they're still quite moist at this stage so there's a little bit of bleeding going on there not too precise just using my fingers now just to where I notice it's gone maybe a little bit too dark easy to pluck out that color you think you've made a little mistake there. Sometimes I use a little paper tissue or a dryer brush or my fingers if it's just a small area. So a background building in the middle. Blue here thinking about where its rooftop is going to be highlighted in the sun. So just a little gap there. And again, we're going to go a little bit darker towards the base. yellow ochre the next building along Just now thinking about the that background building and going around that first figure. Again, going back into that wall. just blocking out some of those windows there where some of them were a little bit darker. I noticed looking back on the photo they weren't all lit up. Well I want to want to just not make it too regular a pattern there. Dabbing more pigment in just while it's still moist. A few little spots there for 
that background area. Sometimes with these mop brushes, you can squeeze out the paint and get get quite a nice point when doing any thinner detail work, lines or aerials there or chimney tops. So a different brush now, a synthetic brush, maybe a medium sized brush here, quite dark. And this will be, start off with this clock tower here, start off with a point. So I'm making sure there's not too much paint on the brush at this stage and try to make a nice point with it. You've only got one shot at this. Start at the point, come down, and then at the base of that spire, there's two little there you can see I'm getting really trying to make sure that point keep checking the point of the brush just to make sure we've not got too much paint on it. Two little pointy bits. And leaving a little open where the there's a bell in there Can lower down actually sort of squeezed out some of the paint. I'm getting a little bit lighter mm -hmm. as the as I come down that the length of the tower. Started off dark at the top, coming a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. So I had a sort of maximum contrast at the top there. All the way down. The top of that second figure. Carefully paint around the shoulders there. Now the rooftop next to the clock tower and the right hand rooftops
So the next building in from the coming towards us from the clock towers is a little bit lighter. So I've used a bit of yellow ochre there to just to make that a little bit different. but still coming down to the base, going a bit darker. Adding in some burnt sienna for the next building along. And I'll probably give these, these right-hand buildings fairly rough treatment, not spend too much time doing them. But like on the left hand side, I'm trying to think where the window openings will be. Just thinking about where my brush is going to go there before I commit myself to putting something down. Thinking about the perspective. So we're going darker again. That burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue. A little bit of a test. base of the buildings. There are actually a few flower pots there or something at the base of those buildings. I'll give the impression of something there. Well I've got those I've got that that little bit of highlight left there which I'll keep in a bit of shadow to something. We're almost there with that. Back in, add a bit more colour while it's still moist. Can't leave it too late, otherwise, you get a different effect. So, again, I just use my finger there just to add in a bit more or we'll take a bit of bit of paint out. So that third car, windscreen. Now windscreens are fairly They've got a, a, a sort of pattern to them and sometimes they're, they're quite dark at the top and dark at the bottom and then you get this lighter area in the middle unless it's sort of right, unless it's sort of a, a very highly reflected windscreen. But generally they're going to be darker than the rooftop. base of that third car. Now the second car. Using a medium sized 
small to medium sized mop brush here which is synthetic but the the Escoda synthetic brushes they do behave like natural mop brushes and they do tend to keep their point a little bit more than the natural ones now that this back this foreground car here not too much detail try to preserve where the the side mirror catches the sunlight and side of the bonnet try and join up that second car to the first just a, a faint line there for the bottom of the windscreen again just adding in a few dabs there letting the paint bleed a bit while it's still wet in the background there with the tops of the rooftops of the cars the foreground cars so now quite dark at the bottom of this foreground car ultramarine blue neutral tint almost neat with very little water in there letting it letting it bleed and that that little bit of a slope brings it down quite nicely So now I'm going back to my smaller synthetic brush. I'm going to, going to do the shadows now of the cars. Not too big because the sun is coming towards us. Adding a bit more into that foreground car again while the paint is still moist just the impression of the the inside of the car and the car seats So now we're thinking about doing the figures. I normally start with the faces first of all. And again, it doesn't matter if the paint behind it is bleeding in with it. And now there 
clothing, doing their, their main parts of their bodies, going a little bit darker here. Quite thick pigment now, not too much water mixed in. With that medium mop. Almost neat paint there, not too much water added in again. And then legs. I tend to not concentrate too much on the legs, trying to make them too thick. Trying to get the proportions right. That's why the, that first drawing is so important to make sure the drawing is good. You're happy with those figures. So those legs are quite thin and insignificant the way I do them. So now think about the shadows for the figures. And I've got a bit of a point on the brush again on this medium sized mop brush. Others in crimson, a bit of neutral tint, ultramarine blue, A shadow, let's do them together. There we are, I think that's okay. Just blend in the tops. The shoulder tops there to the background. We'll go in with a bit of highlight to their shoulder tops later on. Adding a bit more to their faces now. And some arms, a hint of some hands. So I've got a, a lot smaller synthetic brush now for doing a bit more detail work. Picking up some of that darker mix at the top there. So this will be the telegraph pole, telephone pole. Quite a dry, gonna have a dry brush stroke here, all in one go. And a second smaller one. Bit more detail to that sec that first car. A few little dabs on the pavement there, maybe a bit of litter, a few stones, 
and then the window sills of those far windows. Make some of those windows darker. Defining some of those building divisions there. Just a few random darker windows. Those background cars. Just dabbing in bits of paint here and there. few little bits of paint for the chimney tops again could be TV aerials and a few roof tile li lines not too many for that first building there So now thinking about what other detail can I add in with that smaller synthetic brush. We need to add in a bit more definition to the rooftops there on the right hand side. Help with the perspective. Window ledges gutters quite a dry mix this not too much water Careful not to add too much detail to that clock tower, even though it is a, a focal point, I don't want to add too much detail to it. Again, with this bright, with this dry brush, adding in some lines to help with the form of the pavement there, and a few lines to draw your eye in, help with the perspective.
Now you've got to be careful here. We're, we're doing some telephone lines. Not one continuous line, but leaving little gaps. Trying to keep it as straight as we can. A steady hand. And now here's a slightly different brush I'm using now. It's a, it's a dagger brush. I think it's called a, a dagger brush or a sword brush. And it's great for a bit like a rigger brush. It's great for doing fine lines, long lines, or if you're doing masks or in this case, telephone lines. And I've got a bit of white gouache with my dagger brush, adding in a bit of detail there, almost neat out the tube. So, a little bit of highlight on top of these figures here. Shoulders, I think it's a bit too much. Yeah, I think, uh, Take some off there on that left hand side. And it's quite nice then looking at that right hand figure, you've got the highlight against the darker tower. I think that works quite well. Add in a few window frame details on the left hand side. Not too much, don't overdo it. while I've got that white on the brush. Maybe just create the impression of some other roofed car rooftops there in the background. So we're nearly finished now. Just checking that I've got everything in there, haven't missed anything out. Resisting the temptation to overdo things. Final bit of, of the hairdryer, particularly where the white gouache went on. That's still a little bit wet. So if you want any more information on my pictures or videos, information on up and coming live demos that I do, please go to my website, timwilmot.com. Or you can email me, tim, timothywilmot at gmail.com. And what I'll do after I finish with the hair dry here is I'll get I'll find one of my mounts just put it over the picture just to see what it looks like rather than take the tape off at this stage and sometimes using that hair dryer that does help getting the tape off there we are put a mount on and the finished painting so thanks very much for watching uh, again, please go to my website, timwilmot.com, for more information. But thanks very much for your time.